All right, buckle up, because today we're not just talking trucks. We're going way deeper than that. We're diving headfirst into the world of Volvo Group, you know, the company that's been impacting how our world moves for over a century. And we're not just kicking tires here. We're cracking open their code of conduct. Yeah, this isn't about memorizing rules. It's about understanding what makes Volvo tick. Yeah. Like, what do they actually care about? Or what do they expect from their people? It's like holding their reputation in your hands, right? Uh -huh. Getting a peek behind the curtain at their values and how they want to shape the world. Exactly. And, spoiler alert, it goes way beyond just making money. Oh, absolutely. This thing goes deep. We're talking artificial intelligence ethics, human rights in their supply chain, the whole shebang. Okay, so let's jump right into it, shall we? Section one is called Beyond the Steering Wheel Values as the Engine. Catchy. Right? right. And it highlights some really interesting values right off the bat. Customer success, trust, passion, even change in performance made the cut. And that's crucial, right? Because anyone can say they value something, but how do those values actually play out in the real world? Okay, so how do they put those values into action? Well, that's where it gets interesting. Volvo has a whole set of leadership principles woven into this code. Give us a taste. Think leading with passion, performing with purpose, transforming with vision. They're not just words on a page. It's about baking those values into how they operate at every level. It's like they're not just trying to sell you a truck. They're aiming to shape the future of how we move goods, how we connect, how we live, you know. And you really see that reflected in their commitment to sustainability and finding new transport solutions. It's ambitious, no question. Mm. And this code of conduct, Think of it as their playbook for making those ambitions a reality, for making sure every decision, every interaction lines up with that big vision. Which brings us to section two, fair play on a global field, Volvo's rules of the game. This is where things get real world, don't you think? Especially that line about earning business fairly and lawfully. Sounds simple, but when you consider how globally Volvo operates, it gets complicated quickly. You've got competition, sure, but then there are strategic partnerships, navigating regulations in different countries, all while upholding ethical standards. Talk about a balancing act. And I was really struck by how seriously they take fair competition. Like, even casual conversations with competitors could be legally risky if you're not super careful. Oh, absolutely. One stray comment taken out of context can spiral into accusations of collusion or shady dealings, which can tank a company's reputation. And when that happens, everyone feels the impact. It's not just about avoiding lawsuits. It's about protecting the Volvo brand and by extension, the livelihoods of everyone who contributes to it. Exactly. Which I think is a great segue into Section 3, Beyond Vehicles, Data, Diversity and Human Rights. This is where you really see Volvo stepping up on ethical conduct. It's bigger than just their products. It's about global citizenship. Because, you know, you don't always think about data privacy when you think of a company like Volvo, but they collect a ton of data. We're talking telematics from their vehicles, employee info, customer data. Right. It's a lot to manage responsibly. And they seem to be very upfront about it in the code, laying out their commitments to transparency, security, responsible data use. But it goes even further. They take a firm stance against modern slavery in their supply chains. You know, you don't often hear modern slavery and Volvo in the same sentence. What does that even look like in this context? Basically, it's about making sure that no one in their entire supply chain, from the raw materials to the factory floor, is working under duress, being exploited, or caught up in human trafficking. And Volvo is not just talking the talk. They have audits, they investigate allegations, and there are consequences for violations. It's about walking the walk, for sure. And it seems their definition of respect goes way beyond just being polite in the office. This is about protecting the rights and dignity of workers globally. And speaking of respect, this next section gets really interesting because it's all about those blurry lines between our personal lives and our work lives. Section four, walking the line, personal lives versus Volvo's interests. Yeah, this is all about conflicts of interest. And we're not just talking about like straight up bribery here, although that's obviously a no-go. This is about those gray areas. Right, because life's not always black and white. Yeah. What are some examples of where things could get tricky? Well, think about it. Your spouse works for a competitor. Or maybe you've got a side hustle that kind of overlaps with Volvo's business. Oh, I see. Or even just thinking about making a personal investment. Volvo wants to be sure none of your personal dealings could ever influence your decisions on the job. So it's all about transparency then, making sure those lines are clear. Exactly. Being open and honest about everything. Like, you can be politically active, totally fine. 
but you can't use Volvo's name or resources to do it. Although there's that exception in the U.S., right? With the VG pack. Ah, good catch. That's a perfect example of how complex these things can get. So, in the U.S., Volvo employees can contribute to the Volvo Group's political action committee. Totally legal, totally regulated, but it just highlights how seriously they take keeping corporate influence separate from personal political activity. Fascinating. So, it's about protecting you as an individual and the company as a whole. You got it. Which kind of feels like that saying, sunlight is the best disinfectant, you know. Yeah. Just being open and above board. Absolutely. And that actually leads us to a really critical piece of the code. And I'd say it's one of the most important takeaways from this whole deep dive. Section five, see something, say something, Volvo's open door policy. Because, you know, it's one thing to have a code of conduct, but it's another thing entirely to create a culture where people actually feel comfortable speaking up if something seems off. 100%. They even call it a speak up culture. Volvo gets it. People can be afraid to speak up, right? Yeah. Worried about losing their jobs, facing retaliation. Which is a valid fear in any big company, let's be real. Totally. But Volvo's trying to change that. They have a system called the Volvo Whistle, which lets anyone report concerns anonymously. And they're crystal clear about this. Retaliation won't fly at all. And get this. It's not just current employees who can use this system. Even if you used to work for Volvo, you can still blow the whistle if you need to. That's a powerful statement. It really is. It shows a commitment to doing the right thing, yeah. even if it means potentially uncovering their own mistakes. So we've talked about Volvo's values, their commitment to fair play, their stance on human rights, data privacy, their push for a speak up culture. It's a lot to process. Yeah. What's the common thread here? What ties this whole code of conduct together? It's like this code isn't just some document, you know, it's more like a living, breathing guide for how Volvo wants to operate in the world. It is. It's about making ethical decisions, not just because it's in the code, but because that's just how you do things at Volvo. Like, it's in their DNA. It's about weaving that responsibility into the company culture itself. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, brings us back to you, dear listener. This whole deep dive wasn't just about picking apart Volvo's code of conduct. It's about sparking a thought process. What kind of company do you want to be a part of? Yeah, like what values are non-negotiable for you? And and how can you, in your own role, push for positive change, no matter where you work or what you do? It's kind of like that saying, be the change you want to see, but on a company level. Right. And the thing is, these themes we see in Volvo's code, this push and pull between profit, ethics, global impact, it's a story playing out in companies big and small all over the world. It's that constant tension, right. right, between doing good and doing well. And this code, as dense as it can be at times, is really like a roadmap for navigating that. A roadmap we can all learn from. Because whether you're the CEO or just starting out, your decisions have ripple effects. This code reminds us that we're all part of building a more responsible, more sustainable future for everyone. Okay, before we wrap up, one last thought for like in question for you to ponder. The code talks a lot about creating a speak up culture. Right. Where employees feel empowered to raise concerns without fear of, you know, repercussions. Exactly. But how often does that really happen, especially in these massive global corporations? How safe do people really feel speaking truth to power? It's a great question. And it probably, honestly, it probably varies so much from, you know, team to team, country to country. There's no easy answer. No, definitely something to chew on. And on that note, we'll park it right there. That's our deep dive on the Volvo Group Code of Conduct. We hope you found it insightful, maybe even a little inspiring. And hey, maybe it even sparked some important conversations around your own workplace. Until next time.